You're listening to 17 Karat K-Pop. For more information about the variety of topics covered on this show, as well as my other podcast, How to Stan, visit 17karatkpop.weebly.com. And if you enjoy this episode, please consider becoming a monthly donor to support my work and allow it to continue to go on and be free for all to access for as low as 99 cents a month. Visit the Support the Show link on my site's homepage for more information. Hello everybody and welcome back to 17 Karat K-Pop. It's time for the monthly roundup of the top 20 best new K-Pop, J-Pop, and C-Pop releases of the month. Before I get to the top 20 countdown, the usual disclaimers I must repeat. I listen to literally hundreds of new releases every month. So whittling it down to the top 20 and then ranking them is always a monumental task. So I stand by my choices, but I definitely try to more objectively rank these based on quality of the release, the artistic direction, aesthetic sounds, details that come together to make these releases work so well. So keep that in mind. I'm not coming for your faves or whatever. If they're not on this list, it's nothing personal against any specific artist. Only 20 slots to work with, so this is just my list. And maybe your fave will get a shout out in the honorable mention section at the end of the show, so don't fret yet. Alright, without further ado, let's start by talking about number 20. Stargazer by Otora and Meshima Soshi. Soshi Mishima, Mishima Soshi. It would be read in the flipped order in Japanese. It feels very fast. It feels like a song that is only two minutes, but it's the normal length of a song. It's not shorter than your average song. It just has that feel to it. It is so fast paced and intense, like you're in a chase scene or something. And often when I'm choosing what gets in this top 20, I like to look at music videos and things like that, and of course lyrics, but sometimes the lyrics don't even have to stand out too much. The music video can be relatively boring, and I'm fine with that, and this is one of those cases. Sometimes just a great song is just a great song. Something about the ingredients that went into that song just work, and this is one of those songs. It's spectacular without even trying. It uses auto-tune and electronics to really change their voices in fun and interesting ways. And before you get on my case again too much about raving over auto-tuned voices and my argument that there really is a unique, impressive art form to certain auto-tuned vocals. It can be its own instrument in a way to electronify your voice. It's actually still can be pleasing to the ear, so why not support that? For those of you on my case about that argument, please know that actually, Sean Lennon, the John Lennon son, said that his dad probably would really love the fact artists are auto-tuning their voices these days. He said, quote, not so much to fix your voice, but just to play with it, unquote. He actually said his dad didn't like his own voice and tried to change all of the fade-in effects and stuff because he wanted to just change up his voice because he didn't like the sound of it. And there really are psychological reasons why we can't stand the sound of our own voices. That's a talk for another day, but I'm just saying musical legends even support treating auto-tune kind of as its own instrument. They might actually prefer hearing a different quote-unquote unreal version of their voice. Anyway, this is one of those songs that artfully uses auto-tune. Number 19. Heartfelt, spelled H-A-T-F-E-L-T, unclear why, but it is pronounced heartfelt, featuring Kim Hyo-un on the song Summertime. There's something about this solo artist's stage presence and her demeanor, not even stage presence, but presence in general, that really is just this effortless charm and this effortless grace. And she just has that it factor where she sings in a very casual way, and her voice just kind of flows through songs, but she doesn't have a boring presence either. So this song really is just kind of, to just casual listeners of her music, just another good song from her. But 
I honestly think it's a standout for the same reasons the La Luna was for her because certain songs they don't need much but her voice is like with number 20 on my list it just needed that one it factor to convince me to put it on this list for that it was the use of instruments for this one it's her voice that's all that's needed it really just embodies the song's theme of summertime as does the music video she's just very alluring and she has this gorgeous blonde hair and cute clothes she's just an it girl on her own she has all of these staples of summertime in the video it starts out with home movie style footage and you see her hanging out on the beach with a boy her hanging out with friends at a nighttime party pool party it's like a summer highlight reel for instagram featuring your relationships with different types of people it's just relatable and at the same time makes you feel like you can relate to the cool girl at school or whatever because she has the effortless cool about her. Speaking of effortless cool, number 18 goes to Millet, one of my favorite Japanese artists, with her new single Ordinary Days. I hesitated a bit at first to put this on the list just because I'm going to talk about this song more at length in the Best of August roundup for sure because it's just a single off of an EP with other songs that she's teased so far that all sound wonderful that's coming out in early August. So I could hold off talking about this, but it came out on my birthday, which made me feel touched and like a sign I was destined to include it in my list this month. Second of all, I do think this single deserves some shine on its own. It's yet another great example of how her voice is really carrying songs in unique ways. She just has a really raw, gripping, emotional voice. She's always, she never phones it in, always emotionally invested in what she's singing. Plus, it's a very visually just pretty video where she's twirling around in a white dress and there are flowers everywhere. The album cover art is really cool too. Interesting possible symbolism with, she's basically in a cage, but the bars are, made of flowers instead of metal. Number 17, Even of Day, the Day 6 subunit with their new album, Right Through Me. They really bear their souls on this new album and it pays off. They have a really cool way of showing extreme vulnerability and therefore extreme relatability through their just very, very human songs. Nothing about them feels artificial in their storytelling. And they really effectively convey this sense of longing and despair over the end of a relationship and that gut punch they feel from the abrupt end of it in this new single. And the album overall has a cool ebb and flow. The fourth track, by the way, All the Things You Wanted, is a really great song for Wan Pill stands, fellow Wan Pill biased people. Just saying, he's got some great notes in that. Then the energy goes back up on the next track, and then on Home Alone, things sound more playful, less somber. Like you're learning to have fun even though you're single now. And although the tone is lightened up, it is still consistent tonally in other ways with the fact this is kind of a breakup album. And that song's followed by Love Parade, which keeps it that lighter sound that it's almost like this album accompanies the stages of grief. And so by the time you listen to Love Parade, they've reached the acceptance stage. Number 16, Minzy with Tiamo. I have to acknowledge my bias every time I talk about Minzy. She deserves more special shoutouts on the show because I got to interview her and that was very special for me. But also, genuinely, I think this is a really strong comeback from her. Shows a new side of herself, especially after lovely... This is quite the departure from that, showing off. It was first her sweet, and now it's a sassier, more confident side of her. It's really cool how she's playing around and playing the roles of different characters from comeback to comeback. Now that she's started her own company and is just kind of doing her own thing, she really just impresses as a soloist. And the song is super catchy, a very cool Latin-inspired sound, and very cool choreography and wardrobe in the music video. It's just all... 10 out of 10 from me. Number 15, Taeyeon from Girls' Generation, with her new solo single and video, Weekend. This song is exceptionally cute, I think, if you live in the USA like me, because frankly, we have such a workaholic culture 
that her singing about how she can't wait for the weekend to just chill out and do whatever she wants sounds kind of like a fun fantasy because we're kind of on call 24 7 much better work-life balance maybe in south korea i don't know i'm just i'm just saying it's an interesting new wistful listening experience if you're in the usa <laughs> anyway but it is a very cute song about the weekend and the visuals are on point it is a barbie dream world barbie airplane setting it is an adorable doo-wop era wardrobe and some other eras too it's just very funky vintage barbie vibes very very cute number 14 nicholas set with confrontation this is an ost for the new movie raging fire it's really well done even just the instrumental is really well done synths and the guitar shredding it's just a rock power ballad and as for the lyrics, that adds a whole other level of appreciation that this song deserves. Really interesting conversation he's having as he reflects about the thin line between moral and immoral and questions these polar opposite concepts and how much concepts that humans treat as polar opposites are actually quite similar in more ways than you thought. Yeah, it gets quite deep and philosophical real fast. There are lyrics like interweave the universe, referring to seeing the connection between everything, how to defend without attacking, right and wrong are symbiotic demons, and is it sin or cause and effect? That one was really interesting for me to think about. He's basically saying with that phrase, is it inevitable or is it an intentional consequence? Really powerful song in more ways than one. Number 13 is ESO, E period S-O, with orgel. In German, in Dutch, and other languages, the term orgel refers to an organ, some type of music instrument, or sometimes an actual music box. If you didn't know that and we're just watching the video, you might have assumed that orgel refers to a puppet or a doll. Basically, no matter how you interpret it, she's singing about not being your orgel anymore. You don't get to play with her. She's not a toy. She's her own independent person. And so the video shows that where she does go from being tied up with puppet strings to being set free and freely dancing and spinning around the room. The words on the screen at one point that I found really interesting to think about. Platitude, fossil of emotion. The definition of a platitude, a fossil of emotion. I just thought that was a really interesting way to think about it. So she refers to being in this lifeless state, this state where she doesn't feel fully autonomous, and she keeps your attention through not just that premise, but through the execution of that premise. She not only has this mesmerizing dance, but these beautiful dresses, this great makeup inspo, glitter eyeshadow, and platinum silver hair. The video is full of these music box sounds and kind of creepy horror movie-esque vibes to go with it. It is, it does have a bit of dream catcher vibes. So she's really doing the dark punk pop route in a way. It's punk pop adjacent, I guess. It's a very interesting subcategory she's creating for herself. I wish this artist was getting more attention because I think she's just getting started and has some very interesting stories to tell. Number 12, J Soul Brothers 3. With two separate singles they released this month, Kick and Slide, and the one I want to focus more on, JSB in Black. This song, although it is J-pop, it does have some elements of a K-pop song structure. I can totally picture some K-pop boy bands having the types of elements in their songs that they have here. The whispering and snapping as they say, and we back, and we back, JSB in Black. That kind of chanting lyric feels very k-pop-esque all the other sound effects they throw in there to build up the atmosphere like clinking glasses and other things that help you visualize the scene it sounds a bit like super junior music or gorilla by pentagon actually the song kick and slide actually sounds even more like pentagon very playful and fun jsb in black also has what K-pop groups do so well with a beat drop and a big iconic note sung in the bridge. 
And this song has a really just interesting back and forth between vocalists and the instruments. Every element plays off the others really well. So it makes for a very, very, very catchy song. I would also liken it to the sound a bit of the instrumental for Boss by Fifth Harmony. Remember that? Number 11. Soyeon from G Idol. With her first solo mini album and the title track Beam Beam. Soyeon has always had this take charge attitude. Not in a bossy way, just in a sure of herself way. Taking charge of her artistry, wanting to get involved on the production side, and just in every side of her work. She's not just phoning it in. She likes to get hands on. So I knew in advance that we could expect her to thrive as a soloist, and she definitely did. I think, first of all, the marketing for this mini album called Windy was really cute and interesting. She really did something different with it, with the whole burger joint concept that even was the theme for the decor and quote-unquote menu options at her big opening press event for the album release day. It was just a unique, quirky way to market this album. And the music video is equally delightful. She makes working fast food look fun, which is really no easy feat, but she's dancing as she mops the place. She's got this cloudy with a chance of meatballs moment where the burgers fall from the sky and whatever. It is just so fun and quirky. So you have animated burgers. You have an impromptu concert in the restaurant. She's got a uniform where if I was able to wear that uniform to work, I would actually kind of be excited because it's very cute. So she just has a party. Yet she doesn't just have that smile on her face like I'm a rebellious rule breaker here. She does have moments where she looks very ticked off and relatable and sings Welcome to this Adult World. This whole mini album does bounce back and forth and blend together at times. That sense of optimism, life is what you make it kind of attitude, the party will follow me, mixed with this sass and sourness, this annoyed teenage personality of not wanting to be told what to do. And she similarly has that don't tell me what to do mindset seemingly on the other songs as well. The b-sides do kind of break out of boxes, so they're hard to describe. The song Quit really does have a good I Quit energy to it. Psycho is another standout. It's got this cool bass. Then there's Weather, which sounds to me like Blow Your Mind by G-Idol, so that was interesting. A little bit of G-Idol. You can't take the G-Idol out of the girl or something. And then the title track is guitar-filled and mixes her rapping and singing voices. It's quite an eclectic and very cool lasting impression. A very standout debut solo album of hers. Number 10, Kingdom. With History of Kingdom Part 2, Chi Wu, and the new single Karma. This is a great way to pick up where Chapter 1 in their History of Kingdom album series left off. Very consistent, got some interesting traditional instrumentals, and they're telling quite an interesting historic story aptly. It makes for a very historical fiction drama-esque music video. And there's a similar intensity and suspense brought into the B-sides as well. Eternity really has big blockbuster OST vibes. Really emotional, lets their voices shine. Then on Magical, the instruments take the spotlight. And Make Us is a song I would say that. It goes back to letting their voices be the shining standout component. There's this rad bass in Warning. It's overall just a very solid body of work. Fun fact, Chiwu is actually this mythical warrior who controlled the weather during battles, and he was nicknamed this God of War. I definitely feel like this band deserves their own video game world at some point. Number nine, Akmu, with next episode. I personally was very, very impressed by this release, and I think it's one of their stronger ones throughout their whole career. It's really cool what they've introduced through this new album, this new upside-down alternate reality of sorts. Those music videos share a setting in that upside-down world, so it's really interesting. It feels like they really are starting a new episode, as they say, a new TV season for 
their music video world. They've entered this new portal of sorts, and this wonderland of sorts that they are stuck in really is cinematic. Like, the Naka video is kind of scary because I'm a baby, but also because it just features so much falling through different settings, through different stories. And then Hyun sitting next to the giant hole in the ground looking chill, like she's not worried, like I would be. I would be scared of, out of my mind, but... And then she has this shy little mischievous smile on her face, controlling time, freezing time in the TikTok, TikTok, TikTok video. The whole Wonderland vibe I get from it is just really interesting. These music video characters of theirs are both shockingly calm, considering the bizarre circumstances that surround them, and smirking, and even just through their vocal delivery, they're playing the role of people in charge who are sly, and know how much they are messing with other people's heads. So they are both the out of control and totally in control, faking being out of control, manipulative characters here. But if you want to look at them as characters that are more just moral, it is a really cool, interesting, sweet theme for this album they described in a press conference for it. Chang Hyuk said, quote, I used to have a big ambition to change the world with our music. But I realize changing everyone is not what we want. The world is beautiful because of its diversity, and I now wish our songs can help those who are ready to change take the next step." Unquote. And because this album is about embracing a new chapter in your life, they decided to theme it around a concept they call transcendent freedom. Quote, an extraordinary power that goes beyond our physical limits, being free from any external influence. Even if we hit the bottom, such fact will not affect us, unquote. Their title track actually was inspired by The Greatest Showman, and they say, quote, however deep down we fall, if you're beside me holding my hands, nothing will matter, unquote. Number eight, Dio from EXO, with his first solo album, Empathy. He knows where his sweet spot is vocally, musically overall, even aesthetically. He kept up what made That's Okay so sweet by keeping his music video animated in some ways. A lot of 2D and 3D merging in his video featuring his bike ride through a picturesque town. Very, very cute. And it's a sweet song he wrote himself, Rose, the title track. Just very fun, sweet, easy listening. This album really does let his powerful yet sweet and gentle voice shine as it was meant to. Number seven, Shota Shimizu. Again, with Japanese artists, sometimes it's pronounced the other way, right to left, but I just say Shota Shimizu because if you want to look it up on Spotify or whatever, that's what you would look up in English to find it. Anyway, his new album is called Hope, which I am so touched by. Obviously a tribute to me, and obviously why it's on this list. But aside from that, I do think it also just has merit regardless of its title. It really is a well-done album, and it's kind of this overall lo-fi vibe that I think would cause him to gain a bunch of fans if it was marketed wider and correctly, and J-pop artists have always had this happen where the promo is, I guess, big compared to what it used to be, but not big at all compared to the numbers you see on videos for K-pop stars. But anyway, this underrated mid-tempo album constantly goes back and forth between those lo-fi vibes and more emotional ones. He takes expected sounds at this point on artist albums, like a Tropical House beat is always in there somewhere these days, like for Tokyo Night, but he does something different with it. He's got a beautiful ballad with Aimer, and overall, I think this is a good album to check out if you're an AOMG artist, Dan. All the AOMG artists are different, of course, but they have their own routes, their own their own subcategory of music in a way. So he's kind of in that lane with them. The standout track is the title track they chose correctly with Curtain Call, which features Taka from One OK Rock, another favorite Japanese artist of mine. Curtain Call is a really fun song to just kind of sway to and sing along with someone as they do. They just sit in an auditorium in the video together and sing together about waiting for their big time to shine, which, long story short, they finally get to after putting in the work. At the end of the video, then they are on stage. It's time for their curtain call moment. 
Number six, Alexa with Extra and the B-Side Obsession. This is a very fun, refreshing comeback from her because we've known for a while now that she's playing two roles in her music video universe. The evil AI-filled world that feels very apocalyptic and then a more fun, playful, quote-unquote, normal Earth existence. And for so long, release after release, We've gotten to know the dark world. Now we get introduced to her quote-unquote normal world. And this parallel world is so refreshing and needed for her character. It's just so much lighter and we were ready for that. Everything about it is more playful and fun. From her hot pink hair to the very Y2K wardrobe and sound of the song. Definitely tapping into that nostalgia factor that's so popular in music and fashion nowadays but doing it in a unique Alexa way. It's very cool to see her character, her other character, and be introduced to her other character in a way that is just very bright and colorful and different from past releases. The B-Side Obsession is also notable for a couple reasons. One is because it is a great song for feeling fierce and boosting your confidence. It's got a fun video to go with it where she's got this cowboy chic look going on, very much again tapping into the trends of the moment in her own unique way. And lastly, because one of the writers on Obsession is actually Vanessa Cherie Jefferson, who is Lizzo's sister. Talent really runs in that family. Number five, BTS for their new single, Permission to Dance. This song was a gift from Ed Sheeran to them, and also iconic because of the Elton John shout out and Elton John seal of approval. It's such a lively video. It's a great reminder to just hang in there and have this we're all in this together mentality about just being able to dance and not feel like you have to wait to find those moments of joy. Because, you know, with COVID variants and stuff, if you wait for the one perfect moment to just dance and feel relief, you may be waiting a very long time. So don't wait for permission. Just try to have fun however you can, in whatever small moments of joy in your day you can, without waiting for permission. That'd be a great message any day, but especially right now. That if you want to dance, go ahead and dance and find your joy. Don't feel guilty about that. And that's kind of what BTS talks about a lot with the purpose of them making music at all, is to give us moments of joy or comfort in our day. Fun fact, actually, when they were making this music video, the dance, the mega dance with the crowd at the end of the video, that scene that feels like a B-roll was not scripted. They just all started to keep dancing together. Very much the spirit of the song was alive and well on set. I also love what Yoongi said about the lyrics here, saying that, quote, falling is scary, but landing isn't. I think that the difference is that once you land, you can take off again. As long as it's a landing instead of a fall, we can prepare to fly again, unquote. It's so interesting how changing one word really changes the whole framing of a statement, and music is a powerful way to do that and show that power of words. Because think about what would happen if we kept telling ourselves that we're not falling, we're landing. Instead of failure, we just took a mini tumble and got back up. Never underestimate the power of your mind to change based on what you repeat over and over to yourself. Over time, that does have an effect, and that's one of the many ways I think music and BTS has especially positively impacted people because it is, over time, repeatedly drilling into us these messages about giving ourselves permission to have fun, to value ourselves, etc. Number four, twice with their new Japanese album, Perfect World. This album is very mature for them but still has their cute ton-in-cheek demeanor. So it's not just in-your-face sass, but it's this fun, passive-aggressive way of cheerfully, cutely singing things like Get Out, Get Lost, which is the theme of the song Perfect World and how they realize their perfect world is one where you leave. It's kind of their 99 problems, but you won't be one message. It's really fun and fast-paced. The music video is very cool. It's got this dance recital of sorts theme, a loud Broadway show type of vibe. It's mature for them, but again, not too much. So it's still very much twice. Some of my favorite B-sides, Pieces of Love, 
there's quite a range of guitars in that one from more rock leaning riffs to more gentle romantic guitar playing. Good at Love as well is another fun mature one with a cool bass but many moments of lighter sounds as well. This whole album is just quite a cool cornucopia of sounds delivered through the talent and artistry we've come to expect from twice. Number three, Dreamcatcher with their new single and video for Because, which is part of their new mini album, Summer Holiday. First of all, this album is very much a Dreamcatcher album. They really keep consistent, but also not a direct repeat of what they've done before. They just keep altering what they're doing. So it leads to this natural evolution in their sound. What I love about Dreamcatcher's musical evolution is how organic it is. So over time, we were just bound to see new sides to themselves. But they never stray from the specific subgenre of K-pop that they dominate, this punk pop, goth pop realm. They never stray from that aesthetic. So I love that they have this somewhat lighter, much brighter than anything I would have expected from them. So some of the B-sides on this new album definitely sound... Just very light and fun in summary, and not at all Dreamcatcher, but not in a bad way. So they experiment, but at the same time, the A-side, because, is very much a Dreamcatcher song. So they just play around with sounds, but not too much. Never stray too much from what we know they are best at. They also stay true to their brand with an album intro, which I always love. Keeps the story cohesive and exciting from the get-go. It sounds like you're entering a room in a horror movie you weren't supposed to. It's just a very dream catcher of them, and I love it, as is the music video. If you want a whole music video storyline and theory breakdown and all of the nitty-gritty about the literature that may have influenced Dreamcatcher and other sources of inspiration for them, yada yada yada, you can check that out in the episode of my show called A Guide to Dreamcatcher. You can also find it if you go to my show's site, Click episodes and in the drop down menu, sort by artist and it's alphabetical. So towards the top, you will see the Dreamcatcher dedicated episode. But I do want to just real quick here point out a few things that are cool through lines from previous music videos. The settings are new, an abandoned carnival carousel, but they also have the old setting back with that old castle with a haunted feel to it. We are back to the hotel lobby setting. This haunted hotel is back, and a flipping of the hourglass over basically starts the clock until they're doomed, pretty much. Remember lots of clock references in previous videos. The sense of urgency that time is running out to get to the next dimension, which they have failed to enter before. And the parallel world continues to be haunted and coming for them, as we see through the hands that are always outstretched. Previously, a hand was outstretched to offer up a book of spells, and other times they have seen the reflection in a cracked mirror or the reflection of someone else entirely. That theme continues in this new video. And in this video, what the hand offers from the parallel world is an apple, obviously the symbol of temptation. So they are still not out of the woods yet. If you recall, in the Boca video, there was this guy wearing a theater mask, like the kind you'd wear to a masquerade ball. That type of mask is the type that dots the whole fencing in this video. It's lined with those kind of masks. In one of their earliest videos, there was this teddy bear they used basically as a substitute for what a voodoo doll would do. And in one scene in this new video, there's a worn-out teddy bear on the ground. If you remember any of these through lines. The biggest one, I think, is remember the black cloaked people. In this new video, Dami is surrounded by people who have covered their heads, kind of like they're wearing ghost costumes, in the black cloak. In in Good Night, the girls ended up actually wearing the black hoods and walking through the woods. That's when one of them dropped a spell book behind them, and presumably evil people got to the spell book took it through the portal into their world, and that's how this mess started. So the hoods are a big deal. The girls reclaimed their power with them and got it taken away, ironically. The girls were back in the black hooded outfit in the Scream video as they were walking away from the tree with the portal inside it. And now apparently this black hooded costume now belongs back to the opposing team 
from the Dreamcatcher members who are surrounded by who knows who once again. But one interesting possibility is that it is themselves. It's just a clone of themselves in a way. In previous videos that's happened where they literally face themselves, like the parallel universe version of themselves is coexisting. So maybe they are technically still in the cloaks, it's just their evil alter egos this time. There's also more mirroring, again in this video that we've seen in previous videos, where their image is reflected upside down. Things are topsy-turvy, I predict that this video is going to play a bigger role in their story going forward, especially due to those black cloaks, the masquerade masks, in the worn down amusement park setting. I also love that the video ends with a bit of an evil laugh, and tying all of this together in some weird indirect ways I think is the song All Day Long on this album because it is an unusually bright and cheerful song for them, like I've said before. But it has this eerie-ish, echoey-ish quality, reverberating quality to the vocals and synths in All Day Long. So that's what I mean when I say that it's this organic evolution we're seeing, because the story continues to be tonally consistent, but we are still getting this new refreshing sound from them with a classic Dreamcatcher air about everything they do. That's the bottom line. Every song, every video they do has a touch of Dreamcatcher added to it, which is like its own subgenre. Striking a great balance, consistent and new. Number two, FIR Mando Pop slash C-Rock Extraordinaires with their new album Diamond Heart. This is a really, really rich album. The layers of instruments, strings, guitars, it is just loaded. It is just sonically immersive, just so well produced. Definitely I would check out Splendid Dream, one of the singles off of this album, if you want an extra unique genre-defying song. Crush Crush is a good one if you don't think you're into the album. If you're not vibing with it, hang in there for Crush Crush. And then of course the title track which shares the same title as the album. Just such a well done song. Their artistry is on full, full display with this very impressive, new, cohesive, exciting, cinematic album. Drum roll, please, for number one, Neve, with his new album, Broken Kaleidoscope, and the single I'm Alive. I was blown away by this. I really went into it with not negative expectations, but I was pretty neutral about it. It was just one of many new releases I was checking out, and boy did it deliver in more. It's so, so unique. I haven't heard this type of sound in a while. He's got this Dean level alluring voice. He's got this funky western meets rock sound, giving me a bit of Harry Hudson. If you want a K-pop context here, the B-side Trigger by Woods, that's a pretty good one to put on this playlist as well with this album. It's really, really unique. And the title track is really just a stomping good time, literally. And this album mixes guitars with his super unique voice, snapping, clapping, stomping, tambourines. It is a big western throwdown soundtrack mixed with a rock concert. Mixed with a bunch of other things I don't even have the words to describe. Really, really cool, unique project from him. I do have some honorable mentions, as always. I've got to shout out the new Tame In performance video, Just Me and You. Beautiful as always. Lee Dehui from AB6 has a really cool new performance video for Creep. Unknown Kuhn, again, I have to acknowledge my bias for interviewing him, but his son H and S and T has an acoustic version out now, which is cool to see because, again, I've talked about the positives of using autotune, but he actually stripped back all that and decided to just prove to us he does that because it's fun to play with his vocals, but he doesn't need it. He does have raw talent, and so that was refreshing to hear. N hyphen has released the Japanese version of the Give and Taken music video, which is equally cinematic to the Korean version of the video. I also like the new song on their new Japanese EP, Forget Me Not. 
Monster X continues to deliver as well. They have a song out now that is just a little bit extra by being called Kiss or Death. They stay in the same aesthetic realm that they have lately. Gambler vibes continue. James Bond type of look. It was also really exciting when I saw Ki Hyun with the pocket watch again because if you've been following their music video storyline, that is one of the, if not the most key symbol. Jin Yun from GOT7 recently surprise released a solo song called Dive. I don't know why because I guess given that his solo contribution to a previous GOT7 project was My Youth, which has a similar tone to this new song Dive, but I don't know, for some reason I expected him to go not that route again, but a slower, more ballad-ish route. Very glad he didn't though. This is a lively yet mid-tempo guitar back track that I really like. EDM artist Vika Blanca is back. Death Dance is a particularly good one on this EP. It's adequately named Death Dance because it is, it sounds like death and a dance party. It mixes these dramatic sounds like an alarm going off with more intense details, but it's also just your classic EDM song. He's very unique in the way he blends sounds with his Still dance ready, but intense music. This album, Hey, also has this notable track on there that really feels like it's meant to be in a decom, a Disney Channel original movie, like during a montage. When you listen to it, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's a really fun, eclectic new EP. Lastly, I want to give a shout out to BM from Card and his new solo EP, The First Statement. To be totally honest, I put this as an honorable mention instead of on the top 20 list because 13 IVI I do not like at all. That song just is not for me. But I really love Broken Me, so really loving and really disliking a song kind of cancel each other out, I guess? Anyway, it's still a noteworthy release that lets him show who he is outside of Card, which I thought was great. He even just literally shows off more of himself because he's you know, showing off his abs and tattoos and stuff, which no one is opposed to. Clothes make the man, they say, so tattoos have got to make the superstar. But at the same time, he shows a more on a side to him through Broken Me. It's really, really open and vulnerable about inner demons, and so I really respect that and relate to it. My favorite lyric has got to be, broken memories remind us of the beauty of the bliss. That is just, that says a lot. I'm always impressed when artists sing a lot in so few words. As for my favorite Western releases this month, frankly, I didn't listen to tons of new Western music, but what I do want to give a shout out to is, I know I'm late to the party, and this technically came out in June, so it's not best of July, but it's still the best for my personal July because I just checked it out. I am usually not someone who will check out an album just because of the hype and what all the fuss is about, but sometimes I'm grateful I did because the positive word of mouth can be really helpful in discovering, wow, this is something that is worth the hype. I'm going to join the hype. And I feel that way about Bo Burnham's new comedy album. Not comedy, just joke telling. It's music, but it's comedic music. And it is exactly my sense of humor. If you were into musical comedy that isn't just surface layer. Not like banana peel antics and goofy, easily understood jokes. Maybe easily understood jokes isn't the right way to put it, but they're not layered jokes. Jokes that are just out in the open. This is different. This is more my kind of humor, where it is layered and it has this level of satire to it that feigns a bunch of different emotions and opinions on top of what he's really saying. So the social and political commentary in it, I just think, is really delivered impressively and in very catchy ways. That's the other thing about comedic releases is there are tons of parody songs and satire songs that I can respect and think you did a good job delivering your message, but I personally wouldn't put it on a playlist with quote-unquote real songs, but his I actually do. I've had it in my head all week, frankly. Welcome to the Internet, I mean, that's a perfect summary of internet culture and what it feels like and how our brains are being changed by social media. Comedy is a great song for complicated feelings we have surrounding wanting to help and also feeling like the ways we're trying to make the world a better place are actually not doing anything concrete. 
it's just, it's really, and then you've got the Bezos songs, which, again, have this impressively and deceptive take on someone who has been so villainized, so it's like he's defending him, but you can read between the lines and see that he wishes income inequality was not the way it is. Anyway, it's it's very effective messaging, so even if you don't agree with him, I do, but if you don't, the way he gives his message I found very effective, especially because it is so catchy. There are less directly socio-political songs as well, if you just want a song to relate to about feeling isolated in our homes the past year, the song content that kicks off the album, or FaceTiming with my mom. Be aware though, it is not to play around your kids, but it is really great. That wraps up my breakdown of the best new releases this month. If you read the Best of July blog post on my site, 17 kpopweeblycom go to the blog section. If you click more in the drop-down menu, click blog, click posts, you'll see it there. You can find links to and further commentary about every song I talked about today, commentary on the top 20, and then playlists including honorable mentions, YouTube video playlists, and Spotify song playlists for these songs so you can check them out. I will also link to in that piece relevant interviews and other episodes of the show, any sort of link that goes off of what I talked about today. Thank you for listening to my takes today. And I will talk to you all again very, very soon.